You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Scottish Football Show Extra right here in SM Media. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be your host as always. We are changing the way the, the show works. We're going to have every week a club from the West of Scotland Football League on and this week we have the pleasure of welcoming Matt Kennedy and Daryl Meggett from Darvel. Matt, it's a pleasure to welcome you back on the show. Thanks for coming on. Anytime, mate, anytime. Brilliant. We're also joined by Daryl Meggett. Daryl, we are waiting on Wilson joining us. Just gaze away. <laughs> Can I, are we start about Kelly going down? How buzzing are you to rub it in his face when he comes on? Well, I did, I did tell him the last time I was on the show and usually always tries and tweets me when Kelly wins. So <laughs> I can't wait till he comes on just to tell him I was right. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. We're going forward to what Wilson should be joining us later on after he's done a bit of coaching. We'll get into that later. Shankers oh, is here as well. Shankers, how are we? I'm just actually concerned for the, the boys that Wilson's going to be coaching, to be honest. I was thinking that. Are they, all, are they all right? But a wee message to them. Hope, hope they got a good sleep that tonight. And we are we are recording this show during the four, the three of the Scottish teams are taking part in the Europa and Conference League qualifying. Celtic two one behind at the moment. Uh, Aberdeen are two 0 down, and St Johnson are one 0 down. So we will get hopefully be finished the full time scores kind of during the podcast, and we'll do our talk about them at the end. We'll start off by talking about the the weekend. Obviously, we're we're looking back in the, the west of Scotland, but we'll start off with the Junior Cup. Shankers, Lock and Lake picked up a 3-1 win against Montrose at home. Happy result. Cut between Les Hislop with a double. How comfortable was it for you? It was, it was a case of one of the, the a game of two halves. We're up 3-0 in half time, and it was almost as if the kind of foot came off the, the glass a wee bit, and they scored kind of later on, but it was 3-0 at half time. You, you won the really... In, in any trouble, so it was kind of it was kind of comfortable after all. Definitely, Matt. Any of the junior cup results catch your eye? Was there any shocks that we kind of caught your attention during the weekend? I think East Kilbride did they put Brody Athletic out? I think no. did they see that. Aye, so I think uh, that's a great result for obviously East Kilbride and Alan there. Alan Parts now know particularly well for all the amateur days and that. Uh, so I obviously I've not seen Brody since we played them in the quarter final, but that looks like a great result for a great result for school bride. So that's probably uh, the one that sort of jumped out the most. To be fair, I think everything else was sort of what you would expect in terms yeah. of club going through and stuff like that. So I it seems it went particularly well. See the the junior cup was that a hard decision not to take part in it this season? <laughs> to be honest with you, it was probably a club the decision the club made more than myself. Mm-hmm. To be fair. Uh, I think the, the club decided that it was just wanted to have a clean break for the juniors for, for whatever reason. And and I, I, to, to be honest with you, I'm probably distant a wee bit for that stuff. Obviously, just being new to the juniors, well, new to the juniors then in the West League in the last couple of years. So all the politics stuff and issues that probably preceded me going to the club, I was never really aware of since I was in the juniors. To be honest with you, for that period, I didn't find any particularly now any issues. But so I, I don't know what the history it was. And I suppose. It's different for clubs like Auckland Lake, to be honest with you, who have got a real association with that cup. They've won it numerous times. The community's got a real association with it. So I think for them, it's a bit of a bigger decision than a club like yourselves to, to, to leave it. So I, in the grand scheme of things, in the Senior Scottish Cup, the number of games across the league campaign as well, it's probably a wise decision in terms of games. But it wasn't something I was really consulting on it. And always I was really upset about it, mm-hmm. particularly because I really wanted to be in it. I would have stated my claim and I hope the club listened to me. So... Yeah, definitely. Darrow, any results catch your eye for the Junior Cup? I've not even seen any results, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. I didn't, I didn't even see any. See, see when you disappeared there, I thought you were on Twitter. He's like, I see he's trying to get up a few pictures here. Your screen went blank. I mean, I've, not, I've not honestly even looked at any of the results on the Junior Cup. Like I say, I'd probably keep more an eye on it if we were kind of in it and mm-hmm. seeing who were kind of getting the next round and stuff. Yeah. Now nah, I'm not really on social media half the time. Shank, there's a couple of results caught my eye. Obviously, Troon went out to Ben but it was kind of two Premier Division fixtures. Cumbernauld beat Coburnley 2 0, and Ben beat Troon 10 9 penalties. But another result was Hurlford going out to, I think it was Colony Park when it, that was in penalties. Was that a surprise for you? 
It, it probably was. I mean, it's a, probably a surprise a hurdle for Danny winning 90 minutes, but when it goes to penalties, it's, it's a, lottery, right? a lottery almost. It's kind of 50 50. Same with Croon as well. I mean, it's probably a draw, you wouldn't think, as a, as a short result, but uh, a penalty is just it's a lottery to see anybody could, could win it, just who, who fancies herself and the goalie makes a couple of a good saves. But other than that, as you said about the East School Bride result, that's probably kind of one of, one of the most shocked. A lot of the kind of, kind of bigger sides in, at our level uh, have not taken part as well, which is disappointing for the Cup, but obviously everybody's got, got their own individual reasons, so there's no really a right or wrong for it. Yeah, definitely. But it was also action in the Premier Division on Saturday. Mick, uh, Darvel went 2 0 up against Clyde Bank, and then it was uh, two late Clyde Bank goals, and it was a, a 2 2 draw. What was the reaction, first of all? Obviously, you, you tweeted out at the end that you were amazed you didn't win the game, but was it gotten for like, losing the two late goals? I, th- I think when you lose two, two late goals in any game, it, it's particularly gotten. I, I think what I would say is Scott and Andy was at the game. I mean, the first half was just total domination by ourselves. It was just continuous wave of attack after wave of attack. We went one nil up. Uh, then, to be fair, the game was sort of was even for a few spells during the second half. But Clyde Bank didn't particularly look at scoring at any particular point. To be fair, I don't think Chris was in trouble. We got the part and go two 0 up. I think I think probably the disappointing thing is just how we conceded the goals. If they if it had been cut open, or it was great play with Clyde Bank, it would probably be accepting. It was just to. They get a free kick at the edge of the box. The boy hits it, hits a wall and drops it someday. And he puts it in the net. Then in the last minute, Daryl goes to clear the ball and slices it on his own arm. Then they get a penalty in the 92nd minute. And when you see it, and that's I think that was merely a disappointing thing, how we conceded the two late goals, I think. But to be fair, across the 90 minutes, I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody would deny we were no disrespect to Clyde Bank, but we were far superior, in my opinion, on the day, to be fair. But again... They showed great character to stay in the game and they've done it the last couple of weeks getting some uh, late goals and it's picked them up a point here and there. So, But in the grand scheme of things, I disappointed, mate. But I said to the boys on Monday at training, these things even are sell out as well. So what we were doing at Glen Afton, one each, they miss a penalty with five minutes to go, we got the part and score. And era season, these things even them out. But certainly at the time, it's sore. Because uh, it, it's a game we should be winning, to be fair. But again, we just need to unfortunately dust ourselves to move on. Yeah, Daryl, what was your reaction to the, the game on Saturday? But disappointingly, like, um, obviously the gaffer says if the first half is total dominance, and I think when you get the kind of spells in the game, you need to capitalise and get opportunities and putting the ball in the back of the net effectively. And like a, like the gaffer says, over the kind of course of the ninety minutes, we probably had a better of the game, but effectively you walk away with dropping two points or. Then it's like you say, it's a hard one to hard one to take. But listen, everybody's going to have bumps in the road, and hopefully we just kind of get through this wee bad spell and start picking up points for, for now on, and obviously contend for the league. But we just need to take it game by game, and hopefully by the end of the season you're sitting up there. Yeah, definitely. Shankers, obviously there was a it was kind of a busy weekend in the the Premier Division with three games. One of the games that they caught my was coming up beating. Go one and one now when they both on beaten run. Was that a surprise for, for you? What was your kind of reaction to that? Uh, probably be the, the start to winnings because winnings hard. They kind of come out the trap, say uh, flying, maybe dropped a, a few points in recent weeks, but coming up to a, a tough place to go. Uh, a lot of teams will, will drop points in there throughout the season, I would imagine. So maybe no real surprise as coming up beating them, but maybe for the, for the start that go winnings hard. Uh, but dropping, the thing is, the last couple of weeks they've maybe they've dropped a couple of points, losing games, maybe a couple of draws here and there. So it's a hard one, but coming up's a tough place to go for any team. So yeah, definitely. Uh, Matt, what was your thoughts on coming up beating go one and one now? Uh, I, I, I think as Shankar said, they started really well. To be fair, uh, and. I, I, I was at a surprise. I thought, come look, I've had a, a couple of results like the last few weeks as well, where they've went and beat Pollock and maybe struggled against other sides. To see, to be honest, you've got my, my, my own honest opinion, even I reflect back on our performances. I don't think MD's really hurt any sort of top gear yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's been really demanding on the players Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, especially players who've had quite a long period of time of playing. Uh, so I don't think MDs, like, even for ourselves, in 40, some 45 minutes we've been exceptional, another 45 minutes you wouldn't watch us around your back garden. Uh, and, and I don't think MDs are any kind of peak form yet. And there's also, 
the amount of number of injuries people are picking up at this time of the season as well. I, I, I obviously, I've watched a couple of Ockham Lakes highlights. You can see clearly for them, they're missing three or four top players. We are probably missing, on average, five or six just now. You would argue would be contention to play every week. So, And I think everybody's at that. It's just been that sort of season, to be fair. Uh, until things settle now, we go Saturday, Saturday, get back into routine. But I, it was a bit of a shock, but at speaking to Chris during the weekend, he'd said to me, that's for one and drop points every the last four Saturdays in a row, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, and it, there's an easy game during that period as well, because a lot of stuff, especially when you're asking for the same players to play Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, if you're carrying a lot of injuries like some clubs are. So, but now it should settle down a wee bit, hopefully, and... Uh, you can work on training, build people's fitnesses back up and get ready for the demanding season ahead. But obviously, Mark will be able to tell you how Auckland Lake have started better than me. But I, I know certainly from your perspective that, that we've not been anywhere near the levels we would expect to get to. We haven't spelled, but no consistently. Mm-hmm. Daryl, how have you found the start to the, the season? Obviously, Matt was saying there about the Saturday Wednesday thing. How have you found the you know, <laughs> early start of the season? Can I play in a lot of football and can I go into different places? How's it, how's it been for you? I mean, to be fair, I'd prefer to play games and training, but it's it's kind of easy for me at centre half. It's <laughs> you don't move much, but at the same time, not it's hard. Like like a guy from that says, it's it's tough on squads, especially when you try and do rotation to keep boys fresh, etc. And you'll not really get settled eleven and injuries. No COVID, obviously as well, sometimes kicks in. But no, it's it's been great playing Saturday, Wednesday, and kind of missing out the training and the running side of things. Um, but I think when you get back to Saturday to Saturday you'll start to see probably being a wee bit more competitive be full strength squad back and getting a set with 11 every Saturday and mm-hmm. you'll probably see teams starting to kick on a wee bit Yeah, we'll touch a bit on things like that later on as well but there was another result obviously Rossville beating Bonnet in 3-1 Shankers Rossville been hitting a bit of form that was their, their second one in a row third game on beating after a kind of start to the season I think they lost their first five they've certainly kind of picked up the past few games Aye, certainly, and that's probably teams like where, where they are down in the league way, like like Sabon and stuff like that. They'll be looking to, that's where they'll be looking to pick up their points, and it, it's it's a bit of a hard spell you know, for for Bonnet, and they've they've no picked up a lot of points. They're, they're new to the league, and I think they're playing a. I've said the other week there they're playing a, a higher level of opposition most weeks to what they're used to, so they'll find it tough, but. Hopefully they'll maybe ma- ma- find their feet and, and go on a wee run and start picking up points recently. We, we played them a few weeks ago down there and it was it was one 0 for a long time. Our, our goalies made a great save to, to stop it for going one each and, and then we get the second goal and it kills the game. But it was a tough game. Pollock went down there and, and they dropped uh, dropped point. In fact, they, they get beat actually. They get beat three one. So it just shows on their day that you can give anybody a game. So hopefully maybe go on a wee run and start picking up some points. Yeah, definitely. Well, touching a bit in the conferences as well, Atherley are a point clear of shots. Shankers, any takeaways for that division? And think it's going to be you know, those two near the top kind of come the end of the season? Aye, it, it probably is. They're, they're teams that have, have been up in the top league of the, of the juniors uh, throughout the years in there, so so they'll be looking to try and climb back up. Uh, I know there's a lot of teams coming up and down this year, so teams will be, once the league gets settled, teams will be wanting to make sure they're, they're in the top division come next season. Yeah, Max, is there ending in Conference A that's going to caught your eye in that kind of Atherley league? They're obviously still unbeaten. Is there ending in that league kind of caught your eye? Just a four a second, Scott. Don't ask Darrow about ending conferences. He fucking struggles to know who's in the league. So <laughs> 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 leave, leave him out of that chat. I don't want to embarrass him. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, th- I think Atherley recruited really well, to be fair. Uh, so I always, you always thought that bringing boys in who know that level, who've got that league a few times. Uh, I mean, back then, uh, I always felt that they would be strong contenders for it, and that, that's the way it's worked out. I think they've got probably the strongest squad in the league as well, to be fair, and I would expect them as the season progresses probably to, to go on and stretch away a wee bit. Listen, shots I'm sure will be in there, there, but, there, but I, I think Athlete will win that league. I think that we'll have too much uh, across the season. Yeah. Shankers Conference B, Canberra's Lang are sitting top, but the, the talking point in that, that league is Scott Williamson, 21 goals in 10 games. He's a Red hot striker in the, the West at the moment, isn't he? No, I, th- I don't think whatever level you play at, that turn is going to get people uh, catching your eye. And and if he, if he keeps that up, well, Gambit Slang will, will be struggling to keep him uh, by, the, by the end of the season. But as I said, when you're scoring that amount of goals, you're, you're bound to be up there come, come the end of the season, and, and they probably will do. 
Yeah, how many? What's the most you've had? In a, a kind of I, had, I had 19 up until the season stopped with COVID. Uh, that, that last one that we played, I had 19, so that's probably my kind of best return and then trust it to stop at that point. For <laughs> <laughs> my big move. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Conference B, Canberra's lying a sitting tall, but St. Cardiff's still unbeaten. There's teams like Gart Cairn in there as well. What do you think of, of that league? Is that do you think that's going to be a close league, close league this season? It looks like it, I, from the start, I would have, I would have fancy St. Cardiff, to be fair. The chairman there's a good pal of mine. Uh, obviously, Southie's there as well, who I go really well and I'd expected them. But to be fair to Paul and that, they've, got a, they've, they've started really well in the, in the league as well. Obviously, Boy Williamson uh, has, has been on fire. There's a lot of talk about him and stuff like that. But again, Camus Lang's always a difficult place to go. It's parts not the greatest. I'd imagine Paul's got them aggressive and well-organised probably pretty direct and I it looks like they've started really well and I think as the season progresses I think it'll probably end up between them and, and St Caddox to be fair so I but again Southie's two probably different styles probably Southie's probably more renowned for trying to get the ball down and playing and stuff like that so it'll be interesting to see how that develops through the winter and stuff like that but I it looks like they will compete and Gart Cairn they would hope to to be there they're, they're about as the season progresses as well because I think they've invested heavily in their squad and they've recruited particularly well as well. So I, it looks like that'll be probably the most competitive conference at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Conference C, Drumchapel are top again. A 7-1 victory over St Anthony's. Shankers, it. They've, Drumchapel started really well, but you've got teams like Nielsen, St Rocks, Peters Hill, Glasgow Pierce, sure, they're all in kind of close proximity, but Drumchapel have started really well. I they have. We, I've not really, don't really know an awful lot about, about the, some of the teams, but we've played Nielsen in pre-season and got a, got a right tough game uh, against them we, we only managed to win 1-0 and they're a right stuffy side we have a bit of quality up the park as well so I think they'll, they'll be up there but at least uh, Peter Salt and, and Rocks as well will, will, will probably be up there but there's a lot at stake this year a lot of teams try to get try to get up into the, the top league so it'll be interesting when it comes to the crunch at the end of the season mm-hmm. Mac uh, Conference C as well do you think that's going to be another close league? Hi, drummer started really well. Obviously, I know a fair bit about the drummer. I used to play there as a player many, many years ago. A uh, really successful period there. Aye, so that'll be competitive. I think, again, Nielsen have got their know-how and knowledge of playing at that level as well. And that, that, I think that'll be important across the season. But I don't think you can ignore the start drum chapel. They've started really, really well and they're up the top of the league. So I think, again, they two compete across the season. I think that'll be quite a tight race. Uh, I know I've got a lot of the boys at the drum as well, to be fair. But again, even when we were in the championship a couple of years ago, uh, I was I was always impressed with Nielsen as well. I, I think and I know they had a really great start to the season last year before obviously COVID kicked in and ended the ended the season. But I I think I think that'll be quite a competitive league as well. The Shanker says, listen, there's so much to play for with the winners going up into the Premier Division and obviously seven coming down, so there's a lot of stake. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Division 4, Shankers, Kilsyth, Athletic and Finnart are eight points clear and they can arrest the field. That looks a two-horse race, doesn't it? Aye, as I say, I, I don't like I don't, I know a lot, an awful lot about these teams, but when there's two teams ahead like that, it's, it looks as if it's just going to be in them we come the end of the season. So, what, what happens with they ones? Where do they go? They, they, they just stay there. At, do they? Aye, it's just that they, they're just that will be another, that'll be the, they'll end up the voting division is that right Scott isn't it? yeah I think so as well I was going to ask you that is, is that a, so like, amateur teams as well it's, could they apply for membership to the West and can I join that league is that how it's actually that's, that, that's that's inevitable about Cole Siphon for that where to be yeah. fair uh, so for that where have always been primarily a Sunday team years ago and used to do really well in the Sunday Scottish and that then they've got they've got a full academy and they've got a Saturday team I know that the players and that who run all that really well known for years. So I they were basically an amateur team and they've come in. And but I think this year the agreement was that because the structure league had already been set yeah. and they were last minute applications that when hangs the season finishes, they'll become what shall be the bottom tier. And yeah. then hopefully other clubs will then add to that and make that a bigger league. And I think that'll happen. I think you'll probably find early the next six months that there's a number of amateur clubs who have got Obviously, the rain parks and stuff like that, some of the junior grounds or West of Scotland grounds. So, I think that'll go increase in numbers. Yeah, definitely. We'll move into what's coming up this weekend. We've got a few games coming up in the Premier Division. Obviously, Arvin Meadow have got the, the Scottish Cup clash as well against Musselburgh. Mick, do you fancy Arvin Meadow to win that? I, I, I don't know a lot about Musselburgh, to be fair. So, I'm probably just saying that on the basis that 
I've got a, a reasonable bit of knowledge with Irvin Meadow, obviously played them a couple of weeks ago. I think it's Benny and Latter. I've got boys really well organised, well drilled. Uh, I, I would I would I would fancy them uh, to, to, to get through that tie, definitely. But again, I don't really know a lot about Musselburgh to be fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the early rounds of that Scottish Cup, Shankers will tell you as well. There's a bit unknown in it as well at times. It's, it's just about getting through them, I think, as I say. But I'd, I'd imagine Musselburgh will be half decent, to be fair. But I think with the start that James and, and uh, Spenny have had there the last, particularly the last few weeks as well, they've started picking up results. I think they've got their full of confidence and expect to go through. Yeah, definitely. Shankers, obviously, often let play Cumbernauld this weekend. What are you <coughs> expecting for Cumbernauld? Uh, I think I think they had a, a pretty decent start to the to league. Uh, I know a, a few of the players, one of my, my best pals, Clark, plays with them. Uh, Danny Boyle, who's been at ourselves, Sokin Lake, he's been at Davo as well. Pollock, very experienced. Uh, the manager's very experienced as well in the juniors. Uh, he spent a long time there. So it'll be a tough game. Uh, they've been doing, if uh, I'm sure they've been doing in, in one at Cumnock as well. They've, they've took a lot of points at the early stage of the the season, so um, it'll be a tough game, but I think I think every game in this, there's, there's no going to be an easy game. Maybe some week everything will click and you could give some they're doing, but nine times out of ten, you're going to get a tough game. And, and when a lot of teams come to your place, it, it, they, want to, they want to beat us, of course, so it is going to be a tough game, but fingers crossed when we, we go on a, a run. We've, no, we've, we've picked up a lot of points, but we've not actually clicked and, and played well in a lot of the games. Probably, probably the game against Glen Afton is has been the kind of best we've played and even then I wouldn't say we were in our highest gear so fingers crossed that we'll start to click now and we'll start to get a, a run of wins with performances as well Yeah definitely Make a trip to Pollock for, for Darvel this weekend do you look forward to going to Newlandsville? Aye I've, I've, I've obviously been there and watched a few games earlier years I've never been there and been part of the, uh, the opposition so aye it'll be good it's, it's one of the grounds a wee bit like Auckland Lex it's probably got great history in that there's a wee bit of rom- something romantic about it as well large crowd there uh, I will we'll go there looking forward to it uh, boys had a good week of training uh, and we'll go there to try and win the game as we do every other Saturday yeah definitely Daryl what's your thoughts on going to Newlands Field that Saturday I'm looking forward to it I've heard a lot of a lot of good things good atmosphere and um, and a good part to play on to be fair uh, but it'll be good to go and uh, see where we're at obviously getting a good week's training now and a lot of boys coming back into the fold in terms of from injuries, etc. So that'll be good and hopefully we can go and pick up three points and try and kick on a wee bit now. Yeah, definitely. I'll just run through the other fixtures in the Premier Division and then we'll ask everybody for their kind of the fixture of the weekend. Benbar play Cumnock, Blantyre play Glen Afton, Bonneton versus Clyde Bank, Colburnley versus Rutherglen, Colwynnon versus Largs, Rob Roy versus Rossville, Trude versus Beath, Shankers, which are fixture of that? How would that last? Um, the Bees, Trun, or Cowan and Largs probably kind of wanted it stick out. Maybe, uh, maybe Cowan and Largs just for, the, just for the fact that there's a probably a closer game to each other. Um, Strain will, will know Arnie and, and um, oh, what's Liam? Liam that uh, helped out with, with Largs. I don't know if Liam's still there actually, but. Uh, they'll, they'll know each other if they're playing against each other, so I'm a bit a wee bit in that. And Glennon is mixed a bit about dropping points and a good few Saturdays, so they'll be looking to get to get back to winning ways. But is it is it art lags that game? It's a uh, boss part. Oh, is it a boss part? So I was about to say lags. You, you don't get an easy game down there, but if it's a boss part, though, winning should be should be looking to pick up three points. That, yeah, definitely. Mike, what was your result with the, the last of games? Why we run through them again? <laughs> I know you go, mate. I you help me out a wee bit. Benbrook, <laughs> Cumnock, Blantyre, Glen Afton, Bonnet and Clyde Bank, Coburnley, Rutherglen, Buffs, Largs, Rob Roy, Rossville, and Trin Beath. Probably some Shankers, to be fair. You would imagine for winning and uh, Largs uh, will, be, will, will be probably the tie of the games, I would assume. Uh, obviously, Beath and Trun as well will be half decent. Obviously, Beath had a really good result against Auckland Lake a couple of weeks ago as well. So, uh, I that would be, but I would probably fancy if I was going to watch a game, I would be going to watch for one and uh, probably against Largs to be fair. Yeah, definitely. Darrell, when the Paul at Darrell results finish, what result will you first be looking for in SM Media? <laughs> then again, you'd probably be looking at the one and you'd kind of look at the, the teams round about you to see, to see who's maybe dropping points, etc. And it would probably would be like a winning and Largs game, like 
Uh, Shank says if it was down at Lugs, we kind of struggled a wee bit. The first half down there, they they done no too bad against us, and we fair we got a goal out of a zing for Dan Miller for ten yards in his own half, and then it kind of settled the game down a wee bit. But other than that, I think it could have been a possible another game we could have dropped points if it didn't come come from Dan doing that. Cameraman yeah. should have got a fine to for that one. <laughs> Hopefully, We're catching it. a fine, he never caught it. Aye. <laughs> Thank God you didn't catch it, Shanker. You, you don't nearly end it. Ah, I was going to say, I'd have been retweeting it for fucking months. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, I'm going to ask you, obviously we'll move into talk a wee bit about Darvo before we're, we're a steam questionnaire guy comes on. See, obviously the COVID kind of outbreak that happened, was that a kind of, did that kind of put you off your stride after such a good start to the season? Hey, I've... I, I, it happened in the build up to the, the co winning game, to be fair. It's probably yeah. coupled with we had at that point three or four important players out injured as well. But listen, that's not it's just Scott because we've got a very, very strong squad, so yeah. we'd probably be, be able to navigate it better than Mace, to be fair. But so we went in there with a couple out with COVID. Uh, and the co winning game, to be fair, I thought co winning were excellent for the first 45 minutes and went in 1 0 up. To be honest, we probably could have been 2 0 up. But the second half, I think MD was at the game, how we didn't score at least one, two or three is beyond me. I mean, it was just chance after chance for a period in the game. But again, the, the games are 50-50. Probably, then it just got progressively worse that week before the three or four became five, six, seven and ultimately ended up it was eight players out. Uh, and I, 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 I'm not so much saying it would probably put us out of stride. I think the after effects it have been, and I don't know if any of the boys at Auckland like have had it, but the after effect it has certainly been the boys trying to get back now back into the rhythm personally, individually, because a few of the boys have been struggling in terms of their breathing, their lung capacity and stuff yeah. like that. Willie Robertson, who's like a massive part of the club, after Willie having COVID, he ended up, his immune system was so low, he ended up picking up another virus, then he, he, he gets sepsis in the hospital. And I mean, Daryl, Daryl's one of Willie's best pals. I mean, it was touch and go at one point, 10 days ago. Uh, and, and that's the things that, that, that have been difficult. A few of the boys have really struggled to get back into any sort of rhythm but in terms of training and stuff like that. So that's been the biggest issue. No so much you know, playing the, having the run a game. I don't think that's been the, a, a big issue, to be fair. Uh, obviously, we went and, and after that, I think we played Ross Fail and won quite convincingly. Played Dove and Meadow and you were at that game, to be fair. Yeah. Pretty even for spells. We go 1-0 up Aye. and then with a 5-10 minute spell where we fair game us, he's, there's a man himself. Uh, we fair game this is an absolute sitter to put us 2-0 up and we'd have seen the game and then all of a sudden we end up to each and you, you drop points and Clyde Bank I thought we played really well so I was happy with that so I wouldn't say that much it's just some of the boys I think three of the four of the boys have really struggled individually but hopefully we're, we should be early back of that certainly as Meg says after the weekend certainly going into next Monday Wednesday the squad should be considerably stronger than what it's been in the last few weeks yeah definitely we're joined by Mark Wilson Wilson how are we? Hi, thanks. Thanks for inviting me on, Scott. I, I know everyone was desperate to see me tonight. Um, so I've made special allowances. Special. It's nothing to do with hospitality at Darville for the Hurlford game next Friday. Absolutely <laughs> to do with that. Um, but I just thought I'd come. I thought I'd come on. Honestly, I came on to apologise to Darrell because he, he he rightly predicted that Comalant would be relegated. So I come on to give him a public apology. So I didn't believe him, but he was. Once again, I was wrong, and he was, he was right, so that's why I came on to see him. Daryl, you want to respond to that? Okay, that's give fine. Me it's a big man to own up to you. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. And to, to be fair, I, no, honestly, I'm, 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 in, I'm doing my pro license to Newmax, so I'm doing a wee bit of research, so, um, and Scott buzzed me on, so I didn't know why to come on, if I'm honest. Um, but I'd, I'd spoken to a few people this week about the junior show, and, Few folks sent me in some questions to ask you if that's all right. Charge on, mate. Charge on. I think he's all laughing at. No, it was just uh... you, you had said you'd done your pro license. We were actually quite concerned for the boys that were, were getting coached. We won the share. Oh, I tell, I tell you, what, Dean, Dean Thistle boys were flying tonight. Twin strike <laughs> crossovers that all got over tonight. Great stuff. Great stuff for me. It was no air. Uh, so obviously, obviously, with the, the Darvel thing, you're the, you're the talk of the steam. Let's not beat about the bush. Um, but um, and we're speaking to a few people out and about, and 
I've got a few questions sent in on my own private Twitter page that some folk, Mark follows it avidly. He quite likes my Twitter page. <laughs> so I just thought I'd jump on for five and ask you if that's all right, if that's all right to take some questions. Cool. All right. So we were having a wee look um, at the squad and I got a question sent in. That are you still looking to add to your squad, even though it's quite late in the season? And that was from a Mr. M. Shanklin from Morton. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I, I know, I mean, I, I, I know he struggles to get a game now. Um, <laughs> no. I know, a, a, I know, a couple of amateur teams have looked to get him on loan. Me and Shankers have spoke privately a couple of times. Shanker knows there's always a home at Davo for him. <laughs> hey, there's the, I've told him I'll share his wages and stuff like that. He knows the situation. He's always there for him. Well, he ought to be fair. Mickey always brags about that, but John Gold does demand his business going into liquidation if Shanker signs up. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a big, a big, a big selling point, to be honest. Um, no, that, that was just a wee cheeky one. Other one I got in was um, for, for Daryl, actually. Um, and Daryl, are you, are you happy um, at Darvo? Because a lot of folk, to be honest, like, a lot of folk give you rave reviews that they possibly think that... Um, you could possibly play at a higher level. That's no disrespect to Darryl Mick. I hope you don't take that offence. But a lot of people that go to the games I speak to say Darryl Mick it's outstanding to play at a higher level. But are you happy you found your level? Was the question. That's from a Mr. Oh, P, oh, oh. P. Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> from Perth. Perth. He's, he's, oh, wait, don't be laughing, Sean, because that's no fair. <laughs> I wasn't sure what name you were going to say. Was no, I, I, I knew was there was, was, I knew there was something coming. You had to have a dig. Oh, no, that, no, that's, that, no, that, no, see, see the first part, honestly, the first part's quite serious. You know, when, when I spoke to boys, I know a few boys that go to Darville Games and uh, you always seem to be the name mentioned. A lot of folk mention Darren Miller because Disney stop moaning, seemingly. Um, but they, they, they always say, you, you stick out a wee bit, Darrell, if I'm, if I'm honest. That, listen, I, I love it there. Obviously, when I spoke to the guy for uh, two summers ago, he, uh, I was interested in obviously what he wants to build and get obviously into the SPFL. So I, I wanted to kind of be part of that. Um, now, listen, I enjoyed my time playing obviously at a high level when you're going playing obviously in the big stadiums, etc. But sometimes your your life circumstances change and you maybe just need to make a decision. And it, was, it wasn't the case of dropping down or anything. I've no disrespect in the league you're in. I feel personally I could probably still play in the leagues, but I'm I'm absolutely happy where I am and it's a great dressing room and obviously the coaching staff and that there are great as well. So no I'm I'm delighted where I am and quite happy to continue there. Well I'll probably be part of that coaching staff one day once I got his license. <laughs> <laughs> but no and again in all seriousness, the, the the new pitch gets a fair bit of media attention on social media. Is it I mean as I say Dal and Mark Mick, you'll be best Place to answer this. Is it just as good as the surfaces at Dens Park, Tanadice, you know, Rugby Park was pre Astro? I mean, is it that good? Uh, I've no better. It, it, it's, to be it, it's got a wee bit of, there's still a wee bit of knitting to be done. It'll, I think the final seed grows in mid October or something like that, and that's the last seed to knit it all together underneath. But I mean, I the surface is exceptional. Obviously, Shankers has played on the park a, I think a couple of times. I mean, it's night and day. It's to certainly. So it's been rolled. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, aye, it's, it's up there. If you're coming next Friday for hospitality, you'll see it. It's up Absolutely. There. <laughs> it's, it's, it's up there with aye, any senior ground in, in the country. Uh, certainly in, 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 with the SPL, the top league, you'll struggle to find a better grass park in the country. It's, it's a very, very high standard. Aye. And, and that's, that's a question, and I'm honest, I'm being dead serious now. Um, how... Obviously, there's an element of jealousy. I mean, again, for we went through this as such when it was Gretna, for example, you know, and that that seemed to be the model. They threw money at all this, and I, I see. I know that's not the case at Darvo, um, but how, how do you guys deal with that? Are you just kind of far removed from it because you're concentrating on the playing side of things, and it's kind of maybe the fans and the the uh, like the committee that's got to deal with that kind of stuff. To be fair, I think the players are quite. Immune for it, they probably don't see it as much. To be fair, I probably see a, a, a fair bit of it because I probably get a bigger social media presence on Twitter and stuff like that. And so I probably see it more than the boys. I, I don't particularly bother about it. 
to be honest with you. I think when we, I've said this on numerous occasions, when I went to Davo to the outset, there was a plan on the park and after park, and part of that plan after park was significant investment in infrastructure. It had to be done to allow us to get to a point to try and compete with clubs like Hawk and Lake and Pollock and stuff like that. Uh, and, and after the part, we, we, we've obviously tried to invest and build the best club they possibly could. Listen, it would have been easier for me to not ask for new change rooms and new parks and stuff like that and invest my money into the playing squad. But ultimately, to, in my opinion, if you're trying to build something that's sustainable and, and that's recognisable as one of the best environments in, at your level in the country, then you need to invest money after the park. And that's what we've done. It's been significant investment for the club's part, significant investment for John's part. Uh, but, but it was required. I, I think if you want to try and be up there with the best clubs in the club, I look at Auckland Lake as the model, not just in terms of the success they've had there the last <laughs> year, but just you go to the ground, the playing surface is exceptional. Uh, they've got a really good infrastructure in place and that's the stuff you need to get. But the difference with your model in Auckland Lake is they have managed to invest and build that in a number of years on the back of the success they've had. We're trying to catch them in a very short space of time. So the reality is it needs upfront investment that's if, if I was to try and do that in the next 10, 15 years, the reality is that it just wouldn't happen. So we had to accept we had to invest significant sums up front. And we've done, done that. I feel sorry for John, to be fair. I'm being honest with you, because he gets, I mean, he gets chastised, chastised continuously about yeah. when he'll leave. John's been there now for five or six years. The amount of money he spent in the infrastructure of the club is remarkable. If John had to leave Davo on Monday, then nobody can tell me that club is not a far superior place than it is when the guy walked in the door five years ago. So he deserves immense credit for his commitment to it. And there is a, people don't believe me, but there is a proper business plan infrastructure in place. Now, that takes investment for John, but at some point, trust me, that 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 that, um, that investment stops. And I, somebody was actually asking me the other day, it's funny, like, how much money I pay towards wages and all that. <laughs> like, I've said this on numerous occasions, I do not pay any salaries, I don't put any money in the infrastructure or any of the club at all. I don't invest any money in the club, it doesn't require my money. Uh, but uh, as I say, I yeah, but that, that's what I was kind of touching on there, you know, in terms of the jealousy aspect, because obviously you've got successful business, they assume, you know, and it's still those kind of assumptions. Because I saw, you know, and and again, it's it's how you deal with it, you know, I'd, I'd be setting off fireworks and all that, but you seem to deal with it quite well in social media. Like, I think Clyde Bank had a wee, and it's like me, it's not like blatant, it's just like we nips at you, you know, simple things like that. And I think. You know, I, that, that's what Scott does to me on our chat, and it annoys me. <laughs> so I write up him. What, is it, what did Clive Bank say? I never seen that. It was it was something about a lot. It was a, a lucky goal in the ninety seventh minute or something. It was something along those lines. Okay. And Mick, Mick's reply was, "I disagree with your analysis." Or whatever it was, it was something quite short and sweet. It is. I that's just, that stems from jealousy. I always, I've always said this. Uh, I've, I've always been really respectful of this level since I've come in. I've respectful every club. I don't think anybody could bring it up that I've said publicly and I've podcast or online or anything like that. There's been disrespectful to any club. I actually probably the polar opposite. Yeah. What we try and do, unfortunately, brings criticism. Probably how we're doing it brings criticism. But that's just part, part of the course. And it, there's, there's a wee bit we're going to come in and disrupt the things as well to a degree, which is acceptable. So, you, so people get annoyed at that and upset about that. And I suppose we're always compared to, which is usually know that better than me, probably the Irvin Medal thing that happened numerous years ago. I, I was never aware of that and uh, I've not got much knowledge of it, but I can safely assure that so far removed from that, what people tell me that model was, it's unbelievable. So, but listen, it's just part, ultimately you just need to win games of football and that will take care of itself. So criticism will come in very different forms, unfortunately, but it is what it is, isn't it? See, obviously, that's an interesting point. See, obviously, the, the Glen Afton game a few weeks ago, obviously, we know what happened and things like that. <laughs> What's that like, obviously? That, like, what do you think that, like, obviously, we know like, why it happened and things like that, but is, does that, like, kind of make you feel weird as well, just that that sort of thing kind of happens? And is that, is obviously, things like that happened before? See, see, just on that point, that, that's not just happened. Like, no, we'd all go up there at some day previous clubs as well. But like, how does that see when you see that in the like the the sideline? How does that make you kind of feel? Again, again do you know? Do you know something? I, I, people, there was a lot of things happening. There was a video going about, and everybody was. I was getting as if I started the right in some way or another. I think that's the Bruce Lee, we're calling you doing here. <laughs> so, what happened was we we scored. The, Fergie scored in the last minute. We left yeah. it for the halfway line. Our, my, our fans are directly behind your dugout. I mean, yes. direct, I just turned around and I, I parked my chest to them, right? And, and that was it. 
then, I mean, it was a full scale right. Then I was getting shot, stabbed. I mean, <laughs> like I was all, all, all I was the there. Night. I was there yeah. and I thought I just, one thing that I thought was, was good, just the way you kind of stayed, like stayed away from it kind of thing. Like obviously we heard the stuff going on at the end, the point you were getting called and things like that. You do just stay away from it. That's what kind of caught my eye. It was like, Listen, see, ultimately, Scott, I'm there. To, I'm there to try and be professional, run a professional. Right. Try to set an example. or try to set standards. So, you ultimately, listen, is it hard? As you heard, some people call me a, a drug dealer. I was getting called a gangster. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I was called numerous. Oh, things. you still come on the show, so thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, all, it's all that nonsense. That, that, yeah. And then it was on social media, people writing things like that, and on, ultimately, I've got a business to run. You know what I mean? And quite a prominent business as well, so that so that's the stuff that I, I can take the abuse at the side of the park. Do you know what I mean? I'm not expecting yeah. people to be having flags at welcome me or anything like that. <laughs> when, it, when it just falls into social media and a wider audience sees it, and people are writing, people who generally honestly don't know you for Adam mm-hmm. write stuff about you that's total lies and and slanderous. That stuff frustrates me. But again, what, what, what what's it? What's the point? Am I going to stand there and argue with some guy for you come not? <laughs> ultimately, not. No, I'm just going to get. In. I, I'm, yeah, what I, I'm saying, just Scott stays in your thumb. I'm, I'm just, just going to get my to head, tell head, us. Back, head back up the road. Listen, as I say, I, I'm in a very fortunate position. I, I've got run a good, I manage a really good club. I've got really good players in that. I'm very yeah. fortunate to be part of this level of football. And unfortunately, and see, the, you know the most disappointing thing, it was actually a very good game of football. Mm-hmm. I and enjoyed that's it. The sad thing, it was a good game of football. I felt glad after my really unlucky not to take something for it, certainly because I won it at one point. So I do understand how the fans were upset, but the manner in them when it spills in is just a wee bit unfortunate. Listen, I've been to other runs and I've had dogs abuse, but it's been friendly banter, and you know what I mean, which, I, which I'm happy to take. And, but aye, it was that, that night, was a, there, was a, there was a different element to it. But again, it is what it is. I, I, and I, listen, I, I like Glen Afton as a club. Uh, they're good guys and they've got good players in it and I, and I wish them all the best. But listen, you kind of control people's mouths, unfortunately, but it's just why things just need to move on, in it? Yeah, definitely. Wilson, yeah, you want to add? I just just before I go, I've got a pro-licensed assessment tomorrow, so I need to go and get some study done. Not that I need it, but <laughs> I just one last question. It's sent in here for one of my wee pals. And it's for you, Mick. Sorry, Dar, I'm kind of ignoring you a wee bit. But, oh, it's um, all right. I'll, I'll make you my assistant when I get a job. Um, yeah, Mac, but... have you ever farted in a Johnny's fell out? <laughs> 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 and that's from oh. my Mr. Stephen Greenleys. Oh, is it big Stevie boy? <laughs> a terrible man, haven't he? <laughs> Aye. But, so was, uh... That's my PG rating out the window. <laughs> Aye, that's that. That's uh... <laughs> that, that, that's I say that he's, he's, he's signed for the mighty Stuart. Um, he was a good young man. He was, he was, at, he was at training last night, and I says to him, I was going to jump on and ask a few questions, and he said, "Ask him that." <laughs> I didn't ask any questions, <laughs> and then he texts me again today to see if you asked him yet. <laughs> so you, can, you better edit that bit out, Scott. No, you, know, you can leave it in, Scott. It's, it isn't actually directed at me. It's just, it's just that it's a thing that when we put, when we all played together, there was a when somebody goes to start to tell a story about something, he goes like, "What happens?" And they go, "They farted in a Johnny filter." Us, it was a <laughs> hang amongst the players. It was, it's just when somebody bites, they jump in to find it a nosy bastard. To be fair, so uh, Steve's a good guy, by the way. One of Scottish Cup ways. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if he's mentioned that right enough. <laughs> yeah, he's, aye, aye, he's, he's a lovely big lad, to be fair. Yeah, he, he also speaks very highly of your uh, stag and Ibiza, was it? I actually met his wife there, his missus aye, there. Has he told us that? Aye, told us that. Aye, he's a great guy, big Steve. I stay in contact with him from time to time, he's a lovely boy. Remember Wilson, what I doing today, training, absolutely hopeless. So yes, I love him, but lovely man. Lovely Wilson, man. before you go, obviously we're we're recording this. Celtic have qualified for the Europa League, and as of Rangers, how? What's your thoughts? Obviously, is that two big results going into Sunday? Um, I, I think for both, it's job done. Um, I watched about half an hour of the Rangers game, the first kind of half hour, um, before I fell asleep. Um, and again, it just looked looked scratchy. It looked as if. I actually felt if Al Ashker had scored, Rangers would probably go and score two. I didn't find them under any pressure until the last maybe five kind of, kind of minutes of the game. Morelos had two really good chances. So I think over the piece, Rangers are a far better team than Al Ashker. Again, it's whether they played in the heat and the travel possibly can take it out of them for Sunday. 
I see. Actually, I actually, kind of thought the Celtic game maybe go to extra time. I saw the uh, I saw the uh, Joe Barkas and goals tonight, um, selling the first one. But goalies make mistakes. That's what it is. And then Daryl Starfelt chipping in with one and all. Um, but I think see, I think we'll just be both glad to get through um, and concentrate on Sunday. But there'll be big predictions. I, the boys should jump on tomorrow because I'm having a how that's of a show tomorrow on this old <laughs> fucking game. Absolute how it's a bit delight. You'll be delighted to tune in for a rant tomorrow. Tell you that. We are going to be back tomorrow with uh old fun preview that Wilson's going to be joining. But I think you've got a is it an assessment you've got or something? Are we assessing tomorrow? I um I, I feel I feel as if I'm at that level now. You know, Chris Boyd's been helping me with his because he passed his a few a few years ago. So and um, he's kind of he's kind of helping me through it. So we'll, we'll get there, don't worry. They're going to struggle with big bodies, help me. I'll tell nah, you. I know. Imagine him doing a presentation. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I'll let, you go. I'll let you go, you first teamers and you shanker sub. All right. <laughs> Thank nice you. Very to much, see you see, see you next Friday. You'll hear me. See you next Friday, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good man. <laughs> That was yeah. Wilson, obviously, we have our, our questions there. But I've got a couple of things I want to ask you, Darrell. <laughs> obviously, it's a, as Wilson said, it, you have went from kind of SPFL into the West. But how, who's been kind of the teams that's kind of caught your eye that coming up against? Like, is there any teams kind of you've, you've thought are kind of a decent level for what you've kind of experienced in the past? Yeah, I will. So winning, were, like obviously we spoke about it earlier, they, they, they started off like a house and fire in the first 45 minutes of the game and like the gaffers as well could have probably done and at half time probably 2-0 down but I thought beef as well were pretty good as well when we in the first half and I think we changed the shape a wee bit and kind of kept a wee bit of foothold in the game and then later in the game I think kind of they tired a little bit from the first half performance and we kind of kicked on and went and won the game but Probably between beef and kill winning, I think. Um, Ro- I thought Ross, even though Rossville haven't picked up many points, they actually tried to play football at times, and I think they were kind of hit with a lot of injuries as well. A lot of first team boys were out, but but other than that, I would kill winning and beef were probably up there as quite hard opponents. Yeah, Mac. Obviously, the the kind of two big signings you made this summer were David Galt and Craig Moore. They're still we kind of really come into the team. How's how far away are they and how are you going to kind of integrate them into the side? Like, what's the kind of plan going forward? Uh, they're probably, that's part of probably been, I mean, top end, they're part of John Kilpatrick, who you know is in San Casino for playing senior and stuff like that. Jordan's been out all season, he yeah. he's been in pre-season. It's a massive part of the top end of the park. Obviously, Craig has been a massive signing for the club as well, Come back, got back for injuries, he did an issue with his groin the last couple of weeks, so he's no participated in that. And David, had a 20 minutes against Colin and then get injured, had to go off. So he's been up for a couple of weeks. So I would imagine David will train last night, but no, just no with the ball and stuff like that. It was just more cardio stuff. Craig will join back in the group, I would imagine, Monday, Wednesday. John Kilpatrick's not far away. Uh, obviously, Willie Robertson's probably gone about a bit longer term. Uh, so I, the two, two, two massive signings, two great lads, to be fair, as well. I mean, there was always that nervousness. I, 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 I had no prior knowledge of Craig. It wasn't somebody I knew. Particularly. Usually with the boys, I've got a relationship with them. I've got connections through various people. So it, I, I, I'd obviously know the bit of the background. Craig was a wee bit left field. It was somebody who actually knew who made the connection. But I, it was one of the ones coming down for United in the Championship. Had another year on, his, on the table, to be fair. Uh, and... It, 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 we'd, we'd promised him we would help him get a job which we've, we're in the process of doing just now so that he wanted to come out a full time football and concentrate on his on his, uh, building a career for himself but it was always that one where I thought how will he settle in how will he find the levels he get real desire about him but Daryl will tell you I mean the, the, the work rate he, he put in to get back for injury was phenomenal he was working with our coaching staff five days a week uh, Monday to Friday to get back into condition he'll be I would imagine a top top player when he comes out of the squad, as will David as well. To be fair, and and Jordan comes back, that will really transform the top end of the park for us. Uh, and I think we've probably missed a wee bit of extra quality up there. We've dominated like, large spells again without really going on and kicking on at times. And I think they'll make a difference. But either fitted in, they're nice lads. David knows it, the level, obviously, being here. 
mm-hmm. previously before he went up, up senior for, for, for about, I don't know, five, six, seven years. So, but I, two of them are very good signings, uh, and I think they'll make a massive difference to us when we get them back in the next week or so. Yeah. Darrell, who's some of your kind of favourite teammates to play alongside since you've been into Darvo? Yeah, I'm going to say them all. I can't, I can't just pick it. No, to be fair, I thought um, Big Cammy Graham's come on leaps and bounds since he came from yeah. um, Pete Red. Obviously, he was kind of, wasn't he, kind of ball playing centre half, but now he's. We've, kind of, we've turned him into that a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's, he's, he's been great and he's come on kind of leaps and bounds, like I say. And he's a great lad as well. He kind of tries to take as much information on, especially from obviously experienced players like myself. <laughs> and he's yes. kind of come on great. Yeah, definitely. Shankers, yeah, you want to ask Darrow and Mac about the... Uh, no, really, to be honest. Just when, he, when Mac's saying about the likes of the players that, that they've lost, we, we've struggled as well with the likes of Graham Moulton, Brian Boyle and Craig McCracken because out for a, a number of weeks and it's players that, that if, if you've got a whole squad to choose three nine times out of ten, they're playing and you're starting eleven, and it's probably the same way the boys mixed got as well. So I think... When you've, yeah, we, we're probably both two clubs that are in a fortunate position where if, if you've got players like that out, you have got similar replacements to put in, but there's, there's other clubs that aren't in that position. So it is hard when, when you've got players like that that, that could start in your, your, your starting 11, say you're playing your, your, your strongest team and, and they could be in it, and then all of a sudden you're out it and you're having to make shift, and it's maybe boys that haven't had, had 90 minutes an awful lot of the season, then they've got to come in working all day and playing a Wednesday night, then going play Saturday and you're, you're using similar players for, for three, four games in a row over the space of two, three weeks. And it, and it is tough. And that's probably sometimes at this level what players who are coming down for seniors don't realise the, the amount of games that you're being crammed in and, and injuries and, and work and stuff like that. It, it does take its toll and it's going to be probably similar at the end of the season when when, we're, when the late nights come back in and, and I mean, we've got 38 games, you're not going to tell me we're going to be playing all them on a Saturday with, with Cups and stuff like that as well. Hopefully uh, we're in the later stages of Cups and, and you, you don't want to be in the later stages of Cups where you're going to be playing lots of games uh, midweek. I'm like Darrow, I would rather play Wednesday, Saturday all the time, but Mick's a manager, he probably wants to play one game a week and, and keep the squad fit. So it is tough when you've, you've got players missing and, and try to but makeshift squads and, and teams together for games with, with injuries and stuff like that. Maybe boys not playing 100% fit, 80% players out of position and stuff like that. So it is tough. So I think over the next two or three months, you'll, you'll maybe see teams starting to find their feet and, and go on a wee run and pick up points when it's just Saturday, Saturday for probably for the majority. I think we actually got a fixer change. We played Darvo on a Wednesday night, actually. Ah, seen that last yeah. night. <clears throat> so you're maybe going to get the old Wednesday game, but one a month or two a month is, is different for every week. So you'll, you'll probably see a difference in, in teams uh, when they get boys back fit and, and they're just playing one game a week rather than the two. Uh, to be fair, I think I think Mark makes a, a great point about boys coming down the way because ultimately that's we we've we'll probably had to go to that environment to try and build a squad to compete with clubs like Optimale because the reality is <laughs> you know, we'd like to, we're, we're not going to just go around and pick, cherry pick the best players out of Talbot. Put cherry pick the best players at Apollo can all of a sudden build a squad. So we've had to go at a different environment. But it does take a, a massive bit of adjustment <laughs> when you come down for senior football to your level. I mean, the dynamics of the Parker title, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's about desire and heart. Uh, it's a totally different, the pace of the game at times is frightening. So there's loads of adjustment needs to get done. And we, we have, uh, Dar will probably tell you that as well. Probably it's easier for a centre half to be fair. But probably mid of the part tap in the part. It does take a level of adjustment to and that's something we need to hopefully in the next couple of weeks as well start to boys are now starting to realise the intensity and, and the fact you're not going to go to these grounds and get easy games anywhere. Uh, and you need to some weeks one ugly. Uh, and and there's times I've just got to find ways of winning and that, that'll be the challenge for us, particularly when we hit the winter as well, but it becomes really demanding and that's where uh, people were saying for the outset because you signed your made all Dav or Favourites League and all that. <laughs> I was like, listen. Oak and Lech have been on this road a hundred times with that, that group of players. They know the, seat, the league, they know the games, they know the grounds. And we've got a lot of learning today as well. So it'll be a really challenging league campaign. Uh, and I'm sure, hopefully, as things settle down, we'll be up there challenging alongside clubs like Kowanin and Clyde Bank and obviously 
Auckland Lake and Pollock and stuff like that. But I will take a couple of weeks out for everything you say. Well, I think once you get to 18 games played, then you'll start to see who's yeah. going to roughly pull away and who's going to challenge for what parts of the season. Yeah, definitely. We will move on to the European games that just have just kind of literally finished over the past few minutes. Rangers and Celtic are through to the Europa League, but unfortunately St. Johnson and Aberdeen are out. Shankers, you watched the Rangers game. It wasn't the best 90 minutes, shall we say. The highlight of the game was actually watching the news for a minute of it. <laughs> what was, it's kind of job done, isn't it? It's on, to, it's on to the group stages and obviously on to Sunday for Rangers. Aye, but when Wilson was on, he, he basically said the same thing. It's, it's job done. It, it wasn't pretty. Uh, to be fair, I actually enjoyed watching the Celtic game because it was... Celtic is as if they, they're only kind of know one way they know and it's, it's gone forward and attacking football and, and Altmar were, were going the other way. So it was a bit end to end at times. It was actually enjoyable to watch, but both teams are through, job done. It's probably what we expected. The two old firm sides going through and, and other teams probably struggling. I think I think if they were to get through, they'd maybe be punching above their, their weight a wee bit. But I just hope the, the likes of both clubs been away and in a, in a kind of almost a sloggy a game that. Sunday's game doesn't doesn't pay the price for that, and it doesn't become a you know, after sixty minutes and it, it boys' legs are gone and stuff like that. It shouldn't be the level they're playing at. I've, I've seen it happen before. There's there's been European ties and then it's it's old bums and, and the game just doesn't and they're quite up to it. But it should be interesting. Both teams conceding goals, scoring goals, so it, it makes for an interesting tie. Anyway, Sunday that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Max Celtic are through. Obviously, it was a, a rather nervy second half, but Celtic got the job done. What, what was your thoughts on the Celtic game? Uh, I, I think I think the interesting thing for, for a sort of coaching perspective or a philosophy perspective is that it's probably the first time that I've seen Celtic play against a real aggressive press, and I think they struggled. To be fair, mm-hmm. I think that was all when you've got that ideology about how to build through the back at every opportunity, then. It, no disrespect to clubs at St Mern and Dundee and stuff like teams who sit half and give the ball. But when you play against a real aggressive press, and, and that's what happened tonight, I thought they struggled for large, large spells trying to play it. And I think Sunday would be very similar. Probably a very aggressive physical press than probably Alkmaar. And I think if Celtic play like that and so, the night against uh, Ibrox on Sunday, I think I think they'll struggle for large parts of the game. But from a European perspective, I think they've done great. Two clubs in the Europa League. Obviously, Rangers will be disappointed they didn't get in the Champions League. Uh, but ultimately the tournament of European football which you couldn't ask for any more I think obviously Rangers for the diff- different couple of weeks uh, it'll be interesting to see the impact of Covid moving forward uh, and as Shankar says hopefully the intensity of the games tonight don't take any intensity of the game on Sunday because it's set up to be an absolute ding dong by the looks of it yeah definitely see, see um, what you're talking about I'm the oh, sorry on you go Where on you go Shankar's See, see the way the teams like Celtic. I, I watched David Turnbull's interview, and he said like the way they're, they're playing out for the back and that they're not going to change it, and that's it. Do you know? Think I there is a time to do that, but there's also a time to, to play another way. Whether it's play a bit direct for a wee bit, to maybe force the team back and then try and play. Do you know? What? Rather than just constantly playing the same way and it, say you're, you're running games four, four, three, four. Do you know you're still winning games? But sometimes you need to mix it up a wee bit, surely. I think, you know, listen, I think you've played against us, Shankers. I think anybody who comes and watches us would tell you, I think we try and get the ball down and ball through the back. I think that's probably clearly evident, to be fair. Uh, you're right, I think at times you need to mix it up. But, for instance, when I think back to Clyde, we spoke about this in Monday night at training, when I think back to Clyde, the last 50 minutes against Clyde Bank on Saturday when they put up centre-halves and stuff like that, we became a wee bit more direct. Well, in reality, we should have trusted our quality and Aye. seen the game with the ball. But what we've done is we allowed it probably to, Playing to their strengths when they put two set halves in for you know you're fighting your 18 yard box and you're you're defending for your life. Well, the reality is I would have preferred this to be played higher up the park, being a bit braver and played their way through the game. But you're right, at times you need to accept. Certainly, you're playing against tap tap teams. That, that there's going to be moments in the game where you just can't play your way through it at every opportunity. And if they continue to do that, I don't think Celtic need no disrespect. I think the boy Taylor's had a good start to the season. The boy Ralston. The boy Starfield and that I don't think the back four is technically good enough. To middle to front, maybe, but the back four is never good enough to play on the ball to play against a real, real high press, in my opinion. And I'll tell you now, there's no absolute doubt about it if Stephen Gerrard's watching that tonight. I mean, Rangers will hunt Celtic down all over the park. And so, well, I would if I was Rangers anyway, because I don't think they'll be able to live with it. Mm. Yeah. Daryl, what's you know, your thoughts ahead of 
the kind of two Glasgow teams qualifying for the group stages and obviously St Johnston and Aberdeen going out. What was your kind of takeaways for tonight's action? Yeah, it was great. Obviously, I'm a Rangers man. It's great to see them going through. Like was, um, Michael says, it's um, a wee bit disappointed than actually getting to the Champions League. But same again, I just hope it doesn't take the intensity of the old forum, but I doubt it's an old forum. I think sometimes you get that wee extra bit of energy, especially when you're playing in big derbies like that. And if it goes away, sell it or attacking in the way Rangers, I can see it being a goal fest to be entirely uh-huh. honest with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I think it'll be quite entertaining. Give us a wee prediction before we before we finish up a prediction for Sunday. What have we got? I'll go for four two Rangers. Bad goal. <laughs> Goals galore. Matt, what have we got for Sunday? Oh, it's a hard one. I'm a Celtic fan in it. So I was actually sitting watching Shankers and I thought, see if he fucking jumps up here and feet. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm not like that, mate. You can mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <looking at> <laughs> I'm just watching the anxiety in his face. I'm like, this is a good time, by the way. Uh, I think I'll go for a 2 2 draw. Brilliant. We are going to be doing a lot uh, old form special tomorrow night on the channel that will be going out on Saturday morning. I'll, I'll just text him up with that spot, right? <laughs> Aye, that's fine. Nice. You, Wilson's ran. I'm not really looking forward to doing it. So. <laughs> But we'll hear about that tomorrow. <laughs> but we are going to wrap up the show there. I want to thank Dar- uh, Mike and Darrell for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show this week. Cheers, mate. Listen, Scott, as always. Thank you very much. mate. Always good to see you as always, my man. Cheers. Brilliant. We are going to be back doing the, the Scottish Football Show on Monday and we'll have the next episode of the Scottish Football Show Extra, which will be on Friday. As always, please subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels and follow us on social media. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Take care.